Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. Today we are gonna talk about the basics for the intro to coding. Now we're just doing this as a really quick introduction. You will by no means be a ninja or really doing a whole lot at the end of this. So hopefully the idea is to just get you excited to want to learn more for the next time that we can get together or finding some resources that might be available. So this is the basic intro to coding. Um, okay, basic intro. Oh, my presentation got booted for some reason. So I am making an attempt to use my phone. I've got the slides on my phone and somebody coded this not with Google Apps Script to allow me to present to this using my phone. I'm gonna see if this is gonna work. It says joining. If not, I gotta do it the old-fashioned way. Hmm. All right, let this be a lesson to you that your code will also break and not work, and that really smart people at Google uh, do things that don't always work all the time too. Okay, <laughs> do this the old-fashioned way. I'm gonna share my window. That's right. I got a backup plan. It was working though. I should point out it was working. Started. Okay. So we're going to code Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and honestly, you can do forms, you can do classroom, you can do maps. Uh, but I think at a really basic level, let's just let's just talk about Docs, Sheets, and Slides. And so, if you want to code Docs, Sheets, and Slides, you want it to do something that you know, like, why doesn't it do this? Why can't I do this in Docs? Why can't I do this in Sheets? Why can't I do this in Slides? Well, you might be able to. And that's with Google Apps Script. Google Apps Script, and it's based on JavaScript. It is helpful to know about uh, 10 lines of JavaScript. Like, you, you really don't need to know a lot. It, 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 but some. It, it would be helpful to know some. Okay. Now, I have a few projects that I have coded. If you go to alicekeeler.com slash coded by Alice. So I thought I could just show you a few of the things that I've used Google Apps Script for because I say, okay, as a teacher, I need these things to happen and these things don't exist in Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, so I'm just going to do it myself. So now, you didn't see it, but I coded that. You're like, what, Alice, you coded that? I did, I did code that. What you didn't notice is I just clicked on this slide and it opened it up in a new tab. No, more normally, when you click on a slide, it goes to the next slide. So I'm gonna come over here into my um, slides here. And you can see when I click on the edit screen, there's actually a rectangle. It's a clear rectangle. It's a transparent and clear rectangle. And you can see that I have it hyperlinked. It says Alice Keeler Workspace. I have this clear rectangle hyperlinked to the website that I wanna go to. So I find this happens a lot when I am presenting is I wanna share a resource. And so a lot of times I'm like control T, I already have it open, or I control T and I try to, you know, I'm on the spot, so I type it in wrong, trying to type in, get into the particular website. And this is a lot faster and easier. I look at the, the slide and I just click on the slide and it opens the resource that I want to share. And it's not like it's so hard to do it. I mean, manually, what I was doing is I was going here and creating a shape and I make a rectangle. And I would just make a rectangle on the slide and I'd come up to the fill can and I do transparent and I would come up to the line border and I'd make it transparent. And then I just control K and, and link it to whatever website I want to go to. Right. Like it's so hard, but it's tedious after you find yourself doing this clear rectangle thing a bunch of times you're like isn't there an easier way and i think that's really right there why you want to learn apps script you're like this is tedious there's I, you're a teacher you do everything at least 30 times uh and so as you start to like just be frustrated why like, why doesn't what why can't i automate this and then that's where it starts to come in to make a lot of sense that you want to learn Google Apps Script. So I'm just going to do a real quick run over of some of the problems that I wanted to solve. So this one template tab, it says I have 10 million installs, but I really have like 35 million something. Um, 
this is the very first thing that I coded. And what happened was I was taking, I was doing Code Academy for, I don't know, like a week. I know barely any JavaScript, to be honest with you. And this whole time that I'm doing this little JavaScript tutorial, I'm thinking, my holy grail, my holy grail, what I really, really would like to be able to do is to take a list of my students' names and make a tab for them in a spreadsheet because I really like to collaborate. So I really like this all to be in the same spreadsheet. Uh, and so I thought maybe in a year or two when my coding skills are better, I'm going to do this. So uh, after like not even really a week of, of learning some JavaScript, just online tutorial, self-paced, I looked up, did a little Google search on Google Apps Script. And I'm like, okay. So the code, which is called method, the method is insert sheet. I think I know this. So literally within an hour of not knowing anything, I was able to code this, which I now have, you know, like 35 billion installs on. It's super helpful. I just, you can see here from the screenshots, you just put a list of the students' names and you go up into the, what's now the extensions menu, it was the add-ons menu, and you just run it. And if you have a graphic organizer, if your second sheet has some sort of template for the students, it'll duplicate that template for each of the students. It is super helpful as a teacher, let me tell you. This will save you a lot of time and just really let you rethink some of the activities that you do. So um, that was my first thing that I coded. And you can just install that. And, and honestly, it's probably about 10 lines of code. It's, it wasn't even very hard. Um, but it, do it manually. If you were to create a tab and a spreadsheet for every student in your class, just forget about it. It's so slow. It's painful, really. And this makes it really easy. This doc to slides takes your Google Doc and turns it into slides. It's like magic. I mean, look at this. I'm going to go docs.new. Wait for this sucker to load. Come on. And put Alice, Marsha, Nisha. All right. And I just come here to the extensions menu, doc to slides. Look how fast this is. I'm going to choose doc to slides. It's going to put what's in my Google Doc into Google Sites really quick. Um, I don't know why it does that. That's my fault, obviously, because I coded it. So everything's my fault. Um, so anyway, I put two. Here it goes. I use this a lot. I, I just I have some sort of a handout. You have a flyer or something you've made. You just put use the doc to slides. Boom. Now it's in slides and it makes it really easy to present some information that you had. So it takes each paragraph. So every time you push enter, it's gonna make a new slide when you push enter. So just don't be too wordy in your paragraphs. It's pretty nice. It does other things too. Uh, okay, so this audience participator lets people fill out a Google form, becomes your slides. Uh, you know, printing forms really isn't that great. You, you get the way that it is. So if you wanna customize it, I have it so it'll print your Google form into a Google Doc so you can customize it before you print it. So you can get it all on one page. Yeah, super helpful. It also will print students' responses. I've been adding a lot to Dice Slides. I have been just trying to like, what if I wanted to gamify and make games out of Google Slides? So I just keep adding different dice rolls, different game boards, things that are in there. If you are having an event and you need to schedule students into what sessions they're going to or PD sessions, I have an add-on for that. You know, I like to have students add a slide into the same Google Slides, and then I want to randomize them so that we can review each other's ideas, you know, in a random order. It, it's very helpful. Um, and it does it really quick and easy. So, I anyway, I have a lot of them. I have 24. I'm not going to go through all of them. But this bottom one down here in the bottom corner is my most recent one, which automatically just creates that clear rectangle for you. So, notice now where I'm on this slide, whatever. And I go up into the extensions and it says clear a rectangle. And I can choose one big rectangle. And, and it there it is. You see it covers the entire slide. Now, something you don't know about Slides Mania, I am using a Slides Mania template. You can see it here on the side. Paula makes her slides bigger than most people. Like the typical slides are this big, her slides are this big. You can't see it because it's scaled down, but it's a higher resolution. It's actually bigger. So if you put the same size rectangle on Paula's slides, it actually doesn't cover the whole thing. 
So my code says, how big is this slide? And it puts it on the whole thing. Yeah. It was really simple. I think this maybe took me 10 minutes to code this. Now, I have seven years of experience with coding. So, of course, yeah, it's easy. But it was just a couple of lines of code. You can do this. Just like, this is tedious. There's got to be a better way to do it. And so my, my full goal here today is to convince you. I want to learn that. That's it. That's my only goal. That, that is my objective. I want to learn that. All right. So when you are in Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, there is an extensions menu, and you're going to choose App Script. It's slightly different in Google Forms. Uh, you go to the three dots menu, and you can find App Script under the three dots menu. But either way, you're going to go into App Script. How easy is that? And you got to make a function. Now, function is a set of directions, and it's trapped between these curly braces. And that's important because you might have more than one function. So you'll notice where I had this clear rectangle. I have a function that makes one big rectangle. I have a different function that makes a rectangle in every single slide. I have a different function that creates a little button down in the corner that links you back to the home slide. And you're like, why would I want that? Uh, you could always just push one enter, just so you know. So that would be completely obsolete. Um, but if you were making like a kiosk or tutorial, um, a breakout EDU kind of thing, you don't want students to be able to click on the slide and go to the next slide. So if you choose this no advanced slide, it puts a big rectangle on your slide. And then when you click on the slide, it puts you back on the same slide. It automatically does that. It's very handy. But then in that case, you're going to need to put the home button on there so you have a way to get back to the beginning. And this is kind of neat. Look at this. I'm going to do create table of contents. Watch. I'm just going to push that. And what it does is it makes a button for every single slide. And if there's a title, it puts the title into the button. And so now, and they're all hyperlinked. This, hype, this goes to that slide 23. So if you wanted to create a quick table of contents to navigate through your tutorial or your choice board or whatever you're doing, boom, that's what my extension does. Um, yeah, coded it. So each one of those things, each one of those menu options was a different function, a different set of instructions, a different outcome. That's the only point I had there. So here's the big question. What app are you using? What app are you using? So if I'm coding, Google Docs, that is document app. So we have Google Apps, and the apps are Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, Classroom, whatever. So which of those are you using? And then that's what you're going to do. So I'm going to do document app, slides app, spreadsheet app, form app. You know, whatever app you're trying to code, you need to start with that. What am I trying to code? Which app? It's app script. So the apps refer to the product apps, applications. Doc sheet slides. So you can see here in a little screenshot that I have of the coding IDE. Don't ask me what that stands for. I went to the extensions menu and I chose app script. And then it opened up. It's, it's kind of like the code is stapled to the Google Doc. This is a bounded script. You can do an unbounded script, which means it's the code is completely separate from any particular document. I don't think you should start there. I think you should start with a bounded script. You know what's nice about a bounded script is I take a Google Doc, I take a Google Sheets, I take a Google Slides, and I make a template. And then I want to have some code do some action on this template. So I go to the extensions menu. I go to app script. I put this code to the bounded script. It's like it's stapled to it. And then I exit out. I save and I exit out of the IDE, out of the code. So nobody's looking at code. And then I just share the Google Doc like I shared it if there was no code. You just share it like normal. And then that person now has the code, and they don't necessarily have to ever look at the code to take advantage of it. So it's a really nice way, the bounded scripts, to share your code without freaking people out who don't know code. So I just go extensions menu. I do app script. And then I'm going to start writing those functions down there. Now, the word function is all lowercase, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N, and a space. And then you can name your function whatever you want so long as it's all one word and doesn't have any funky characters. You do need to have those parentheses. 
And I'm not even going to get into that. You just need you just need them. And then you'll see that I have a curly brace to start the function. I have what app are you using? And then I have a curly brace to end the function. And so then I could just push enter a couple of times. The number of enters that you like enter, 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 enter. I like to do a lot of enters. They don't matter. You can have extra space bars. You have extra enter keys just to kind of space things out and make it nice and cozy for you. So you can do that. And you want to make a variable, names your line of code, so you can use it again. So what you notice, I put VAR. I'm going to go backwards here. So I have VAR doc. That's my variable. And so I can now just use doc to mean I'm using document app. I'm coding this Google doc. I'm coding this active document, this document that I'm actually using. That's what I'm coding right now. So I'm going to give things a variable name. I'm going to, here's what I want code is. And then I'm like, and I give it a name. And I put the VAR in front of that so that I can use it again. It makes it reusable. So you can see here I have function and the name of my function is my function. And my variable is doc. And it's document app dot get active document. Now it's really important. Notice document app does not have parentheses. But get active document does. So that's something you do need to be aware of. It's an object or a method. Uh, those are some JavaScript vocabulary words. Basically, just get used to it. Lots of parentheses you have to throw around. And then I and then I put a semicolon at the end. Like, and I'm done with this line of code. That's really important because you can actually push enter and keep doing your lines of code down instead of across because sometimes they can get really ridiculous so you really do want to be real clear with the computer like yeah I'm, I'm done I'm good ready to go on to the next one and I made this variable doc I made it I'm gonna use it so I type doc on the next line I made it you know and then I'm gonna I got this variable body I made it I'm gonna use it I'm gonna type body somewhere so I type the doc and then like what is doc it's the active document that's what it is i just don't have to type it again and then i pushed period and i put in get body i need to get the body as opposed to the header as opposed to the footer now if you're in a spreadsheet you have the whole spreadsheet you have the sheet and then you have the individual cells or range so you always got to think about how you're kind of drilling down in on your on your documents okay we're going to press period. We're going to end with a semicolon. This is the genius of app script. It is multiple choice. Multiple choice, which makes it really simple that you can actually start coding and not really know anything that you're doing. If you can type the word document app, and honestly, I don't even think you have to do that. I'm going to do docs.new. And come on. Once, two. I'm coming up here to the extensions menu. I'm going to go to App Script. It gives me a default function. And just for funsies, I'm going to make my own. So I'm going to push enter a few times. I'm going to type the word function. It's really important you spell it correctly, all lowercase. And this is going to be, I'm going to call it rename. I need that set of parentheses. And I really need these curly braces where this curly brace starts the function and this curly brace ends the second function. Now, I've put these two lines in here. Uh, they mean note. It's a comment. So it allows me to put in like little post-it notes into my code. Like it's not code, but I'd like to know this. So I'm pretty sure if I do capital D, O, oh, see, look at this. I only need to know two letters. If I know D and O, uh, it suggests to me, like, do you want document app? Now look at this, capital S, L. Ooh. Do you want to code Google Slides? Slides app. All right, capital S, P, spreadsheet app. Look, you don't even have to remember the whole thing. You don't have to remember the whole thing. What app are you using? Type the first couple of letters. Ooh, auto complete. Then I push period. I'm like, Oh, what can I do to this spreadsheet? Look at all these things I could do to this spreadsheet and get the active sheet. This is the one I use 90% of the time is get active spreadsheet. The flaw in this is that I'm not coding a spreadsheet. I'm coding a Google Doc. So we're going to go back to document app dot 
what can I do to this Google Doc? Less things than I can do to a spreadsheet, I notice. I'm going to get active document, get active document, get active spreadsheet, get active presentation. It's not rocket science. After you've done it 50 times, you do this in your sleep. I do need parentheses and a semicolon. And then I'm like, I should name that. I, that's my code. Cool. But I should name that. So I'm just going to write in front of there, VAR, DOC equals, and I give it a name. And then I type that name, the doc. That was the variable I just made. And I push period and says, what do you want to do that document? Look how readable this is. Add an editor, add a bookmark, add a viewer, um, get the header, set the cursor, save and close. Like, look at this. A lot of these things you could either A, figure it out, or B, just pick it and see what happens. Hmm. That's the beauty of App Script. It, it is really figure it outable, a lot of it. You just need to know really a couple of really simple basics. Now, what I'm not showing you is you really want to know how to do a loop, a for loop. Or know how to do a for loop. That's very helpful. Um, yeah, there's other things, but those, that once you get the for loop in there, you pretty much know everything, then you're king. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Make sure you end your lines of code with a semicolon. So you can see here in my screenshot, I have used the word, the variable body. And on the next line, I have a variable. I use the variable. I type the variable. I push a period. What do I want to do with the body of the document? And I can append a paragraph. I can insert a page break. I can find text. It's actually incredibly easy to create a mail merge. You find the merge tag and you replace it with other text. You're trying to merge into it. Um, using Google Apps Script. It's quite lovely. So those are the basics. It's pretty easy. Save and run. I think the hardest thing is if you are um, under the age of 40, what does save mean? It is this disky looking icon, which only old people like myself know that this had a function one day uh, back in the day. Now it's just a rectangle with a circle on it. So if you'll find the rectangle with a circle on it, the disk icon for you young people, I'm just letting you know. And you save it, and then run, looks like the play button in YouTube, and it's gonna do whatever your code said. Now, I have two functions. I have this function, my function, and I have this function, rename. So I do wanna pick which one I wanna run. So I save it, and which one am I gonna run? Because I have two. And you saw in the rectangle one, I had at least six, seven. I had at least seven. I had more than that, but at least seven. Uh, so you do want to tell it which one you want to run. Nothing's going to happen because this code literally has nothing in it. But I'm going to run it anyway for funsies. And it's going to give me this scary screen of doom that you're going to get every single time you try to code that says it's going to take your firstborn child and burn down your house. No, that's not what it says, but it's going to feel like it. Okay, so I don't think you can see this because it's in a pop-up window, but it says this project will allow you to see, edit, create, and delete all of your Google Docs. No, no, it won't. That's just like the default worst case scenario that Google is trying to keep themselves from being sued because I don't work for Google and they don't know what I'm doing. I'm like all rogue and stuff. So uh, you're just going to get this scary screen every single time that you code something and you just say, I trust myself, so I'm going to allow it. Now, if you use someone else's code, you should ask, do I trust this person? Otherwise, don't do it. That's basically the bottom line. Uh, unless you know how to check someone's code for malicious code, it really just comes down to trust. Okay. That's as simple as it is. And I'm going to see if anyone has any questions. I got two people with me. Misha is like a ninja. In fact, she was recommended by Microsoft today for her Minecraft videos. She's like famous. Mm -hmm. So you should go check out her Minecraft, Teaching with Minecraft, Minecraft EDU playlist that she has. Maybe I can uh, share that out for you later. So she's like, I know all of this, Ansem. So maybe, Misha, you could think of a tip that you would share with people who are new to Google Apps Script. Suggestions are very, very helpful. 
as she was showing you with the doc apps and you're not sure what should come next. A lot of times if I'm coding something and I maybe I don't remember, I'll go back and I'll, I'll put the period in there again and then it, it'll show me what should come next so that way I can choose, oh yes, yeah, this is the one that I want. I'm gonna try this or I'm gonna try this one and see what this one does. Yeah. And so that it's very helpful to kind of kind of keep you keep you going and starting off something easy when she had yeah she had get body you know create a Google Doc and just see what happens it's amazing it's it's a lot of fun it, it's and it's addictive once you find a little bit of success you not just find yourself that's how you procrastinate like I'm supposed to be making this big report or I'm supposed to be grading but but I could I could just be coding right now. I just put a, a, a shape on my Google slide. I just put a, you know, I just created a new Google slide. You know, I mean, it, it does simple things and, and I would start super, super simple. Start yeah. with, you know, one little teeny tiny function. But I want to know how you got the little pictures in there on your menu. How do I get the pictures on my menu? You mean on your menu, your, your, you, you know, your menu here, you've got, you, you had like little pictures on your menu when you when you clicked on different menu choices oh you ready to feel a little silly i went to emojipedia.org are you oh wow okay <laughs> now i know <laughs> yeah so unlike moodle you can and i learned that the hard way uh you can add emojis and so you see where it says dice slides and i've got a little dice in there that's just yeah. an emoji so you can add emoji into your text fields which really helps to organize um, some of your choices. So, you, I mean, you see here, I don't have any emojis in the menus. Yeah. And it, it would probably be helpful if like, I had the math dice versus the games have a differentiating emoji, just your eye comes to it more quickly. So I am trying to do a little bit more of those. The reason I have this emoji here in the middle says dice slides and then the dice emoji is because uh, it alphabetizes, you know, this whole list alphabetizes. So when I look for dice slides and the emojis at the bottom, uh, I was struggling. So then I moved it to the middle because I did like the idea of having a dice for my dice slides. Uh, but yeah, those are, so now th this half hour was worth it for you, Misha. Now you've learned a nice trick that you can add into your menus uh, fun little icons. Yes, very, very cool. Very cool. <gasps> Any other questions? This is just. I just want to make a comment that when I'm not sure uh, about doing something, I do look for an extension. And mm. I will say, um, so that's where I like to start as a non-coder. And then the other thing is, is I tell myself is just check with what Alice is coded because you might want to use that. Yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate the plug. I do have a lot, a lot of things. And and what I, in fact, this just happened the other day. I saw someone tweet out, her name is Pam Harris, and she was tweeting out that she had, I'm going to show you this, um, factor puzzles. And so she showed a template of, of these factor puzzles. And I thought, okay, that's cool. Um, I guess I'll put on this one. But I'm like, she just had one example. Like, what if I want to generate it with different numbers? And so I went in here to the extensions. And if you go to dice slides, and if you do dice games, I have factor puzzle. Pam Harris factor puzzles. I'm just going to add a puzzle. And it's just going to add this to any slide. So this is the slide I'm looking at. It's going to add a factor puzzle there so that I'm able to just do a quick warm up with students. So to your point, Marsha, you know, when I'm talking with teachers, I'm having conversations or I see people sharing on Twitter or Facebook uh, some different things. And I'm like, well, you know, I think I could make a resource for that. I, a lot of times I do. So wow. I do have quite a few things um, that I hope is really helpful to people because that's the goal. So just so you know, these two numbers in the middle are supposed to uh, add to the bottom number and multiply to the top number. So what in nine gives you eight, and then what do those multiply to? So just helping you just do a little warm up for funsies. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me. I hope that you feel like, I wanna know how to code. 
And that would just be my goal is just encouraging you to get started. 